Hey guys, Dave here. Today I'm going to talk about gimbal lock. Probably many of you already know what this means, and those who don't, well, I'll do my best to try to explain. Well, first of all, what's a gimbal? A gimbal is a pivoted support that allows the rotation of an object about a single axis. So, in a 3D space, an object has three gimbals, or three axes, right? The outer ring will be in a hierarchy, where it's the high hierarchy, and it will move everything that's inside. Then, the middle ring will move the inner ring, and the inner ring will move independently by itself. So if we see an object, okay, you see that when you have the rotation tool selected, you have the circles, right? Where the blue is the Z, the red is the the X, and the, the green is the Y, and the yellow is the selected one, right? But we don't see the, the hierarchy here. We don't know which one is the the one that moves along the other and which one's the middle one which one's the the inner independent one so in order to to know which one's which and what's the rotation order you have to open up your attribute editor and check it out by default it'll always be xyz but you can change it yzx zxy xzy yxz zyx okay so Let's say I change this one to ZXY. Let me go here from default to ZXY. And what does it do? If I, okay, let me explain. What do, what do the letters mean? The last letter is the highest hierarchy. So check out here in, in my channel box and here. If I select the Y, the last letter, the highest hierarchy, it will move the X and the Z along. If I select the X, it will move the Z, that's the, the inner one, and the Z will move independently, that's a hierarchy. On the other hand here, Z will be the highest, move along both of them, Y will be the middle one, move X, and X will be the one independent. Okay, so a gimbal lock, what's a gimbal lock? You know that an object has three gimbals, three axes, but a gimbal lock, what is it? Okay, a gimbal lock is when two axes match together or lock together and this happens because of the middle one the middle axis always in this case y in this case x so in order to see this you must change your rotation view you press e click here oh, oh i already had it in gimbal but the default is always local okay i'm changed to local so if i go ahead here and move the middle one okay you'll see that Okay, it's not respecting the hierarchy, it's just, it's moving along both axes. And if I move the last one, it won't respect the hierarchy, it'll move both axes. And we don't want that, we want to see the hierarchy, right? So, I need to go again, and change the gimbal, where, when I explain the hierarchies. And you'll see that, what's happening, right? So if I move the Y, and I set it to, uh, let's say, minus 90, or even a 90 degrees in rotation. Wow, it will snap right over with the with the Z axis, right? So the X and the Z are snapped. And this leaves this object only with the possibility of having two axes for rotation and not three. So if I want to move Z, every time I select it, I can. I'm just moving X. Man, that blows. So this is what happens, or this is the reason why sometimes you're blocking out your perfect poses, and when you go ahead and spline and and see your tangents clamped or everything smooth, and you start noticing that your arms are flipping and moving in a weird exorcist monster way, right? So we don't want that. Okay, let's go see this in an example. I have this um, Stewie here. Oh man, sorry for the driving. I'm not very good. <laughs> okay, so I have this Stewie here, and I have posted out these two poses. My blocking. Oh, precious blocking. Well, it's really, it's not precious. It's just an example. Okay, but it's coming up. Okay, fine for what I'm gonna explain. So you have here this arm. It's gonna push, right? looks good 
But when I go ahead and spline, what happens? I have something here weird. What's going on with the arm? It's moving quite strange, right? And if we go ahead and see our graph editor, you'll see that the curves are twirling weird. And this usually happens when, let's say, let's say I'm gonna delete this one, okay? And I'm gonna go back to local, okay? And I, if I press, go ahead and, and select my, my arm here, okay? And in, if instead of rotating one axis at a time, I start rotating like this, and I don't know, probably I did this, and I didn't notice, boom. Okay, we go ahead and see my graph editor. See, the lines are all weird, not the same. So, look, wow, this is the typical flip-out error that happened because I made a gimbal lock and I didn't notice. So, how can I avoid this? Okay, I have three methods or three options for you. There probably are more, but I only know three. So the first one is to obviously start over, delete it, blank, right? And just stay with one of the poses. And then again, start posing it out. Probably just like, oh, remember always to pose one axis at a time. Okay, let's see what this, see, boink. So that's either deleting or searing out your your pose or, or the, the, the object or control you're rotating. That's one option. Okay. That's, okay, let's go back. Okay. And there's another one. There's another one. Very cool. So you go to your graph editor. And as all this curve... Um, calculations that Maya does do, are done in some thing called an Euler um, method or Euler oh, Euler something I don't know the thing is in order to fix this you go here to curves and use the Euler filter boink see it fixed it let's go again Z curves Euler filter. Okay, so what happened? If I see, it's fixed. The Euler filter is a great tool that Maya has for you, but this doesn't always work. Sometimes you have uh, complicated rotations and it, it won't work all of the times, but it's a, a very cool thing. So remember, the Euler filter is another way. Searing it out is one, using the Euler filter is the other, and the third one, most importantly, is Instead of trying to fix things, do it properly when you start, okay? So, okay, let, let's, um, let's say I'm, I'm just starting out the pose. Okay, let me see where it out here. And this one, I'm going to delete it. Okay, let's press S here. Okay, so let's say I'm just beginning. Okay, remember, the first thing you want to do is have your gimbal mode, okay? And now you must set the rotation order so you won't get a gimbal lock. How do you do this? You have to know which axis you're going to move the furthest and which axis you're going to move the least. The furthest one, or the axis you move most, will be the one of the top is hierarchy, or the last letter of the rotation order. And the least axis you move, or the one you move the least, will be the middle axis. Because the middle axis is the one that makes the gimbal lock. So in order to avoid it, you want to move it um, less, or, or not move it at all, right? Or move it uh, as um, less as you can. So in this case, if I were to move, I would probably move here my Z axis to make the arm go down and then the Y axis to make it go forward. And probably the X axis, I'll move it a little bit so the elbow won't be too near to the torso, right? So 
I go ahead to my attribute editor, right? And um, if you check it out, by default, you'll have here the X, Y, Z. But I want it to be like this, Z, X, Y, where, remember, well, in this case, Y will be the, the axis I will be moving more, or at least more than 90 degrees. Then X will be the least one, the one that I just want to adjust so the elbow won't touch the torso. And C will be the, the other one that will, go, will make the arm go down. Okay, so I have it like this. So once I have it like this, I can move it. Boink. I can move it. Boink. Oh, I'll leave it just right here. I need something like this. Oh, yeah. Sure. I was going to do the anticipation, right? Okay, so I'm like this. I'm like this. I'm like... Okay, let's do the elbow. Let's do the elbow. There we go. Okay, let's do the, the hand here. Again, it's not perfect, but... Well... Okay. Okay, let's delete this one. I just saved it priorly so I knew kind of like which key. Okay. So now if I move it, okay, I can move here. Remember that the Y was the one that I was going to move more. Move the elbow. Okay. There we go. Move the Z. And probably here, the X. Okay, yeah, I guess that'll work. Probably I'll make the elbow a little bit more. Yeah, that works. So if I scroll down in my timeline, boing, there we go. I have no weird things going on. And that's because I was careful enough to have my gimbal view on and to set my rotation orders before doing the posing. So, well, it was a, a long um, tutorial, but hopefully it was very helpful. So remember, now you know what a gimbal is, what a gimbal lock is, and how you can avoid it. Searing out your poses uh, using the Euler filter in the graph editor, or simply um, avoiding all of this by um, setting your rotation orders and having your gimbal view open. So that's it. And if you want to make little adjustments once you have this, you can go back to local. And if you move some like this, well, it won't. It won't really do much trouble. It'll even help. It'll be easier. This is when you use the local mode. Once you have your your posings out. So when you're blocking, I recommend you to use the gimbal. And when you're Polishing stuff out. Okay, go ahead and use the, the local view mode. Well, thanks again for staying here with me. And I hope this tutorial helped. And if you guys want to know anything else, uh, please send me a message. I'll be more than happy to investigate and do this crazy stuff again. So have a great week and happy animating, guys. Cheers.